This is part two of an introductory series on Arduino programming. This features the Eligoo Most Complete Starter Kit, and if you haven't watched the first video, I strongly suggest that you do so. There will be a link now at the top of the screen. In this second part, we'll be looking at lessons three and four concerning LEDs. First, it's just a basic introduction using the Uno as a power supply, and we'll be seeing the difference in the light output when we connect different resistor values. Let's move on now, find the components that we need, and make our experiment. We have our component list here. We need the Uno itself, obviously, a five millimeter LED, these resistor values and some jumper wires and that's all going to be hooked up on the breadboard. Let's open our starter kit now and locate each of those items. So Arduino Uno, we can see the resistors underneath there and our breadboard. So Let's get each of those out. So all the resistors are packed in this one bag and they have been labelled for reference. So here's our 220 ohms, we're going to need those, our 1 kilo ohm and our 10 kilo ohm. Let's locate our LED that comes in this separate little box. And I love the attention to detail, in a little desiccant bag there to uh, stop things getting damp. So any of one of these red LEDs will serve its purpose. And finally, some male-to-male -male jumper wires. Let's see how we get them hooked up together. The breadboard is the device which links everything together. As we can see in the documentation, there is a positive and a negative rail on each side, and each of the five holes here are linked together vertically, so you can put components across these and then wire them out to the necessary power rails, and you can put integrated circuits across the two there. The light emitting diode, or LED, is just a little indicator lamp which, as its name suggests, emits light from a diode. And being a diode, it has a positive and a negative terminal. As it says here, normally the longer lead on the component is the positive. Provided that there is a resistance in place, if you place the component the wrong way round, nothing will happen, it just won't light. However, you must never connect these LEDs directly across the power, as they will just burn out. The value of the resistor that we use in conjunction with the LED will determine its brightness. Here we can see the colour coding. Components that have been supplied in the kit are this five band code. This is the simple circuit that we're going to be making, just using the Uno as a five volt supply. Before moving on, let's take a quick look at these resistors in greater detail. Here are the two 20 ohm resistors, and we look at the colored bands there. We can see red, red, black, black, brown. So that's two, two, zero, zero, and then the brown band indicates the 1% tolerance. Of course, once you've removed the resistor from the bandolier, you then have the challenge of working out the resistance either from the colour codes as we saw. Alternatively, you can get yourself a multimeter. That will enable you to measure the resistors directly. So there we go, 218. Another option is a component tester. Now I built this component tester from a, from a kit, but there are also uh, commercial ones available links in the description and this will enable you to test a whole variety of components not just resistors so again 218.5 again on the commercial unit we see it indicated as a resistor this time it says 219 once your resistors are off of their bandolier once you've finished using them it would be a good idea to place each of the individual values in its own plastic bag that way you'll know that everything in here is 220 ohms so again, it's useful having the labels on the side here. So we need ground and we need our plus five volts. It goes to the blue rail and to the red rail, respectively. We can identify the positive side of the diode by the longer leg there. So our positive is going to go into the breadboard and our negative into the negative rail. We now take first our 220 ohm resistor and place that from the positive rail to the positive of the LED. So now we connect our UNO up to our computer. We can see that the LED is glowing very brightly as the 220 ohm resistor is quite a low value. If 
we swap the 220 ohms now for 1K, maybe difficult to tell on the video here, but it is significantly dimmer than it was before. And finally, with the 10K resistor, it is clearly much dimmer now. So we can see that by varying the resistance, we can vary the amount of light produced. But there's a much more elegant way to do that using the UNO itself. Let's move on and take a look at that. Next, we're going to look at the RGB LED lesson. RGB stands for red, green, blue. It's essentially three LEDs in one package and these colors are going to fade from red to green and to blue and then back to red. The components are similar to before, the exception being we need three 220 ohm resistors and we need to find the RGB LED. The RGB LEDs are quite distinctive as obviously they have four leads. Here's the schematic of the RGB LED and we can see that all of the cathodes are connected together and they'll be connected to ground, then the individual RGB anodes will be connected to their respective pins on the Arduino via the 220 ohm resistors to prevent too much current. A little background on colour, essentially you can mix any colour you like by varying the levels of red, green or blue, and if they're all the same intensity you get white. How we vary the intensity of each of the LEDs is done by a technique called pulse width modulation. This is a very common way of controlling power, not only with LEDs, but as we'll see in the future, with motors. The pulse width modulation pins on the Arduino are usually marked with a little sine wave. So we can see that pulses come out of the Arduino every 500th of a second. Essentially we're varying the amount of time that the LED is switched on for. The top diagram here it's 1 20th or 5%, then 50% and then up to 90%. When it gets to 100, i.e. 255, there's no actual outputs. So looking at the connections on the Arduino, the three PWM connections are there on pins 3, 5 and 6. So they'll be going out to the individual resistors and then to the diodes. The common of the diodes will be connected to ground. Here we can see the wiring diagram on the board. Once we've got that wired up, we need to load the code, which is uh, very simple. We've seen that process before. We go into our codes folder, find the lesson 4 RGB and open the sketch. The first part of the sketch defines the pins. So we've seen that they're pins 3, 5 and 6 and they're allocated the individual colours. The next part is the setup function. Setup only runs once. This is to define the pin mode as outputs for each of the LEDs and sets the initial state. In this case it will be writing the red LED as high or on and the green and blue LEDs as low or off. What the loop function is doing is choosing a value between 1 and 255 for the level of the colour. So it starts with the red as 255, i.e. on, and the green and blue again as, as at zero. The program will then cycle each of the LEDs through the individual 1 to 255 levels, changing their brightness. Let's get this wired up and upload the sketch and see what it looks like in real life. All is wired up and ready to go. All that remains is to upload the sketch. So just keep an eye on these LEDs here as the sketch uploads the transmit and receive. Hopefully we'll have our own disco. Here she blows. Oh, isn't that pretty? Guess it's a bit difficult to see. I wonder if I turn the lights out it will be any better. A little. So you can clearly see it cycling through the different colours there, up to the red, to the green, and then finally the blue cycling around. A very pleasing effect. I used something similar, uh, link up there, when I was putting together a, a skull and I wanted the eyes to look like they were like breathing, uh, dimming in and out. So another successful lesson. I hope you'll join me next time when we'll be on to, what would it be? Lesson 5.